Welcome to, as promised, another edition of the Hey Mary Kay podcast. I am Ashley Best. I'm joined here, of course, by Mary Kay Cabot. So Mary Kay, let's dive right into some of these questions. Of course, we split this into two parts. Yesterday, we talked a lot about what the Haslams had to say out in Phoenix, as well as the Browns defense. So today, we're going to actually start out with some questions we got about the AFC North quarterback landscape as a whole with Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. So this question comes from Dave from Chicago. Hey, Mary Kay, how do you read the Lamar Jackson situation after attending the meetings? Will he be playing next year in Baltimore? And if, or if so, do you have a sense of where else he might be playing? You know, I actually think that Lamar Jackson would like to be gone from Baltimore. Hard as that is to believe, it really seems like he wants to be out of there, that they did not value him. They did not give him the Deshaun Watson-like contract. And I think he's just kind of done. I think he feels like... Uh, you know, it's it's a change of scenery is in order for him. And if he had his druthers, he would go somewhere else. The problem is no one is making him that blockbuster Deshaun Watson-like offer. That's what he wants, that fully guaranteed contract. It's not happening. It is kind of weird in a way. I saw a lot of players come out in uh, in defense of Lamar Jackson last night, not understanding how people can't be making him an offer. And, you know, there's talk that there's collusion and all Mm -hmm. kinds of other things. So, um, you know, I don't know if he's got very many other options, but I will say that uh, it's a pretty dire situation right now. Yeah, well, we did actually get a question about the possibility of collusion from, I believe, Anthony and Columbus here. So, hey, Mary Kay, do you get the sense that there could be claims of collusion by Lamar against the owners? And could it just be a matter of, you know, him believing, oh, well, they're colluding against me because they don't want to, you know, have these guaranteed contracts become a thing? Well, that, you know, that could be part of it. And he, you know, Mm -hmm. he would have to file some kind of a grievance. He would probably have to, uh, you know, really make a little bit of noise about this to get the NFL to look into it, or he would have to sue. Uh, So these are all things that, you know, that are possibly on the table. And, um, you know, it's not going to get, it's not going to get pretty anytime soon between Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. And when you're starting off like that in the off season, it's kind of hard to pull it together during the season. I mean, we see that he, they are interested in Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, how can you, if you're Odell, uh, you know, get excited about signing there when you don't even know if Lamar Jackson is going to be the quarterback? Yeah. Yeah. I'll throw in a couple of, I had a few other kind of questions off the top of this because I know like thinking hypothetically, um, I'll start with my, Hey, Mary Kay, do you think that Lamar Jackson's expectations for a contract in Baltimore would be as high if Deshaun Watson's contract wasn't what it was? You know, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. I mean, especially not the fully guaranteed part, but once Deshaun got that, then he wanted that too. So if Deshaun Mm -hmm. had gotten a $230 million contract, but not fully guaranteed, I think that there probably would still be some hope for him in Baltimore right now. Uh, But in order for him to be back there, they're going to have to uh, come up with something to smooth over these hurt feelings. Yeah. And it's so interesting to me, like when we talk about the feelings involved in this, because we all know Lamar Jackson is kind of negotiating this in a very different way in terms of not having being represented by an agent for a lot of this. I mean, my understanding, and you obviously have a much greater understanding of this than I do. So I want to hear your insight, but I feel like agents in these kind of situations can sort of act like a buffer and he just doesn't really have that buffer. So it seems like there's it's a lot easier for feelings to get hurt in the process when you're seeing all this behind the scenes talk of like what you're supposedly worth and supposed offers and and things like that, where a lot of players don't typically see that kind of stuff. Well, that is true. I mean, there are plenty of players that let all of that um, be run through their agents and they don't have to see how the sausage is made. They just end up with this great number at the end of it all. And then there aren't all those hard feelings and all that sort of stuff. So I do think it lends another uh, layer to this of of hurt and mm-hmm. ruffled feathers and all of that. So, um, you know, it's going to be hard to to smooth it over. There are certain players who are very principled, and he's he is one of them. I mean, yeah. he is a player who is very, very principled. Some 
players take things in stride. Other, other players don't. And I think that uh, Lamar Jackson, just from a matter of principle, uh, he feels very slighted in all of this. And I do think it's hard to come back from that. So, you know, I do, he, he needs a change of scenery, but what in the heck are the Ravens going to do at quarterback if he is gone? Right. I mean, it's so hard to imagine, you know? Yeah. And that's why I think this is,